and multi-platform games are not nearly as valuable as single first-party games. Because if you have a first-party game like God of War, Horizon, Spider-Man, anything like that, you can only find them on one single location. That's it. It's just, it, it doesn't work the same. Now, where PlayStation f***ed up, and this is 100% where I believe they f***ed up. <laughs> Ladies and germs, it's your man, Just Jay Sama, back with another video that you did not ask for, okay? <laughs> so, um, if you can't tell uh, by the title, we're talking about some epic games today. Um, let me actually go ahead and pull up this art article real quick. Um, so, according to this article, Epic Games has offered Sony $200 million dollars my boy 200 million dollars okay for up to six ports uh to be uh sold exclusively on the epic game store now um this is good and this is bad i really don't mess with the epic game store only because uh you know their nickname is <laughs> epic malware store okay because the amount of like residual files that they leave on your computer and like just just the sheer amount of just bullshit that is left over when uninstalling stuff or even uninstalling the launcher itself it's just eh, mm, but we'll talk about that another time so in this article they specifically reference the fact that a lot of the games that have been coming out from playstation on pc pertaining specifically until dawn i mean until dawn uh pff, horizon zero dawn <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn and Days Gone, their releases on Steam were not exactly satisfactory. So, Epic is basically like, hey, if you give us, you know, these exclusive rights to these games that are coming up, you know, we'll break you off a little bread plus, you know, whatever type of partnership they have on top of the sales. Now, I think this is a smart, stupid move only because a lot of this stuff is not supported as it should be i mean there was uh what was hideo kojima's game um um um, um the backpack simulator that one ups man simulator um amazon <laughs> amazon <laughs> amazon delivery simulator listen uh so that one kind of did pretty well but some of these other games as they're dropping onto pc they really seem to lose their value. Now, my issue here is that they're dropping them at full price. Um, so it's not like these games are coming out and they're at a reduced price based on the reduced prices that they are on PlayStation. They're coming like as brand new games, basically, which is an issue because one, you now have created a situation where you're now considered a multi-plat. And multi-platform games are not nearly as valuable as single first-party games. Because if you have a first-party game like God of War, Horizon, Spider-Man, anything like that, you can only find them on one single location. That's it. You have to buy a PlayStation floor for it. Which is why Nintendo has never, ever, ever, ever had any desire to put anything on the PC market. Because once you put uh, Mario on the PC platform, it now devalues it. You now can no longer dictate what your prices are as owners, as publishers of that specific IP. Uh, with PlayStation, you know, they, eh, they're not really making the best moves lately. Honestly, the, the PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita store thing was a little dodgy. Um, them losing MLB The Show, which a lot of people saw as a big deal. Uh, some people thought it, it was extremely minuscule because it doesn't move consoles, but it does. It's just, it, it doesn't work the same. Now, where PlayStation fucked up, and this is 100% where I believe they fucked up, they're now trying to create an ecosystem but they already had one. Xbox is a little different because you can run Gears on a Windows phone as I hold up an iPhone. Um, <laughs> it, you can buy... Uh, specific games for your 360, for your original Xbox, for your Xbox One, you know, Xbox whatever, you know, all of these different type of games, and as long as they're on the same Microsoft account or Xbox account, you can play them on multiple platforms. That's the best part about the backwards compatibility and all of these other 
non-starter issues with Microsoft. They are truly winning when it comes to, like, getting people involved. I've even considered myself jumping into the Xbox ecosystem because of Game Pass. Like, they have tons of games I actually want to play on PC because, clearly, I don't own an Xbox. So... Instead of buying an Xbox, I can just pay the $12.99 or whatever to play Xbox games on my computer. Boom! I am now part of Microsoft. I am now benefiting them. I am putting money into Microsoft's pocket, okay? Where Sony f***ed up was the fact that they not only built an ecosystem, but they had access to, like, their own shit. They had their own streaming service. They had their own mobile devices. They had their own mobile apps. They had PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, PSP accessibility, PlayStation 4, and then as they keep going into new generations, they keep fucking it up by cutting off previous generations. The easiest thing for PlayStation to do was figure out how can we digitally make PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3 classic games available on the PlayStation 3, I, I mean, on the PlayStation 4 and on the PlayStation 5. That's all they had to do was literally figure out how can we get digital stuff to perform on every single from every single generation onto the PlayStation 5 and then make it exclusive for the PlayStation 5. That would sell consoles. If you wanted to play your PS4 games, well, you can play them on the PS5. If you have digital games downloaded for the PS3, which would have created a huge dilemma about them closing the PlayStation 3 store. Hey guys, we're gonna close the PlayStation 3 store. And people are like, oh man, no, don't do that. I wanna buy my PS3 games. But don't worry, if you buy a PS5, you can play your PlayStation 3 games that you have purchased on your PlayStation 5. It would have meant those two things lining up would have made sense, 100%. If you wanna play your PSP games, Sorry guys, we're shutting down the store. Oh man, damn, I haven't even bought such and such game or whatever, and we're shutting down the Vita store. Oh, damn, I haven't bought Gravity Rush and all this other stuff. But you can play those games on your PlayStation 5. Just go and purchase a PlayStation 5. You have created an ecosystem where you could play your PlayStation 4 games on your Vita at one point in time, and vice versa. Okay, that was their idea when they created games like Gravity Rush, PlayStation All-Stars, and any other cross buy cross-play games. Sly Cooper, when that came out, it came out on the PS3 and on the Vita, and they said, yeah, if you buy it for the PS3, you automatically get the Vita copy for free. And it's just like a no-brainer. Sony has already built this ecosystem, but now they're slowly destroying it over time. I don't, I don't understand. And now that they own multiple anime platforms, Funimation, Crunchyroll, uh, they have partnerships with Verve now, they have all of these other dynamic things that they could include in their fucking PlayStation 5 and make it super easy to want to get PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now, even though PlayStation Now is shit, it's like, this was a no-brainer. You were winning before you even knew you were participating in the game, Sony. I don't I don't understand. Meanwhile, Nintendo's out here fucking around just doing whatever they want to do, and they're just like, "Oh, we're going to make a uh well, f fucking collection of the games and only make it available for 24 days." Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is huh? <laughs> I don't, I don't understand what any of these companies are doing. Microsoft is clearly winning. They understand where, where things want to go. But I mean, hey man, what do I know? I'm just, I'm just a dude with barely having 7,000 subs. I clearly don't know anything. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I want to know what you guys think. Is, is this a good move by Sony? Do you guys think Sony allowing their first party titles to come to PC a good idea? I personally, I think it's a flop. I think it's a stupid I idea. I don't think. I know there's money behind it, but I don't think this is a great idea. I think they could have put this money somewhere else. I think they don't have very innovative people on, on their integration teams, on literally anything. Whoever, whatever team is responsible for coming up with these ideas and stuff like that, they need to be thrown out. Seriously. Like, there is no... It's a huge lack of creativity here. Now, I could understand if there's a new, like a Vita 2 or like a PSP 2, like you know, a handheld Sony device where you could play your PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation uh, PSP, Vita, whatever fucking game, like old PlayStation games because that that software is available to play handheld. It's, it's super easy because the fact that they're emulating multiple classic games on the PlayStation 4, like Jack and Daxter, or the Sly Cooper Collection, or anything else from previous era games, and all they're doing is p making bad emulation ports and putting them on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. There's no excuse now. 
You've shown that you've been able to do this. So why are you guys not getting your heads out of your asses? But that's just me. Once again, I don't know anything. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Guys, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Um, and if you're enjoying this type of content, guys, also, um, the podcast is going to be available. Uh, if not today, tomorrow. So uh, that was really fun. So go ahead and check that out. Also, uh, make sure to follow me on all of my socials. Links are down in the description below. This has been your man, Just Jay Sama, and I'll see you guys on the next one.